special guest, Jordan McRae, uh, currently NFL free agent, um, played in the NFL, played in arena ball, played in the AFL. Man, just about every league you could think of, he played in, he uh, dominated in. Uh, Jordan, man, what's going on? What's up, man? How y'all doing? Appreciate you having me on, Block. Nah, definitely, definitely. So, I just pretty much told the told the audience, you know, he played in the arena ball, played uh, AFL, played uh, in the NFL. Um, so, give me some of the teams that you played for in uh, in each of those leagues. So, in the NFL, 2014, undrafted, went to uh, the Green Bay Packers, was on and off. They practice squad that entire year. Then, uh, at the end of the season, got picked up by the Minnesota Vikings. So, ended with Minnesota, Minnesota in 2014. Um, right before OTAs, got cut by the Vikings and uh, had a workout with the Panthers, made the Panthers team, um, was there pretty much all the training camp, got released at the training camp. Uh, wasn't hearing no more calls, so uh, decided still wanted to play ball. So decided to play arena ball for the uh, Orlando Predators, hometown, not hometown, but went to UCF, so the familiar city. Mm -hmm. uh, played there in 2016, then played arena for the Cle Cleveland Gladiators in 2017, then played for the Baltimore Brigade in 2018, and then uh, 2019 played for the the startup league with the AAF the Orlando Apollos, uh, did really well there and got a chance with the Bears, played there for all the training camp, OTA, in 20, at the end of 2019, got released, then played in the XFL this past season before COVID broke out uh, in 2020. There we go, man. So as you can see, he has a long list of teams that he played for. And uh, that right there goes to show you that, man, if, if it's something that you, you're passionate about, there's no need for you to give up, man. Continue to bring to you to, to um, uh, uh, live in your purpose. And uh, that's something that he's doing. So we talked about a little bit about your journey as far as with the NFL and the other leagues that you play for. Man, mm -hmm. and it's crazy right now because a lot of a lot of these youngsters right now thinks that it's all glamour. When you make it to the NFL, that is all glamour. It's all glitz and glamour and cameras and making mm -hmm. all this money and and um, you know nothing goes wrong. So uh, uh, pretty much they think it's no struggle, right? So what would you say as far as um, being a professional athlete? Like what what's the most important advice you can give a youngster that's that's chasing that dream? I'll say you got to constantly be working. Because as good as you might think that you are, um, guys in the NFL, like scouts, GMs, their job is to find somebody younger than you, cheaper than you, to replace you the next season. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't if you ain't putting out, you know, all pro caliber season, man, you got to be working. You got to be versatile. And um, you got to every single season prove that you deserve to be there because it's not just going to be given to you because it's their job to find somebody better. And they're going to do that in any way possible they can. You just got to keep working. I mean, that's true, too. And just like how you said that they, they, uh, they're they looking for somebody younger, cheaper, and for the high school guys that's listening right now, it's the same way in college. You know, mm -hmm. I tell guys all the time, like, when you're being recruited, yeah, they, they, they selling you this dream, but as soon as you get there, reality steps in. Right. And then um, – Coach Key, our, our former um, offensive line coach, I remember there's one thing that he that he said. I remember I was messing up a practice and something that he said that always stuck with me is they're always looking for guys to take your spot. Every single every single year. Every single year, they're mm -hmm. looking for somebody to take your spot. If I'm recruiting or bringing in somebody that's better than you, my team will always continue to be a better team every single year. Exactly. So, um, I, I mean, that, that, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy to hear, but it's the truth. Right. Because that's their job. Exactly. You know, that, and, and at the end of the day, they, they, so a lot of coaches care for you, but they care about their job too. They got to support their yeah. families and all that kind of stuff. They got to be getting better and, and you better be getting better with them or they're going to find somebody else. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, 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 
kind of kind of a side note because since since we already on the subject, let me let me go to a little side note. So what what do you think about all these guys transferring? Like I I promise, man, when I was in college, I have. I did not see this no. many people transferring so much. I it it uh everybody's situation is different, honestly. So like I a lot of people think, oh, you running from competition. But I mean, if I know for a fact I ain't finna play somewhere and my dream is to get to the NFL or or play college ball and be a significant player on a good team. I mean, I probably wouldn't have stayed either, but I just I just feel like wherever I went, I was going to make it work regardless. That was my mindset to begin with. Mm-hmm. But I don't fault guys for doing it, but I ain't really think that it will ever come to a day where it be happening every single year. People transferring, not having to sit out. Like, it's 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 starting to become like college is a business just as yeah. much as the NFL is. Right. Right. I mean, that's true. And, and to be honest, my, my old mindset was if I, like, with all these kids transferring, my old mindset was they're scared. They don't okay. want any competition. Mm-hmm. They 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 scared to compete. But now when I sit back and, and just like you said, if I know I'm not going to play anywhere or play somewhere, and I know that, you know, it might be a, a situation where the coach might not be the person that he was portrayed to be. You right, know what I mean? So it's different situations. You know, mm-hmm. I have a kid right now that I'm helping, you know, in the transfer process, and that was his situation. Coach mm-hmm. wasn't who he who he portrayed to be. So now when I look back at it, I'm like, okay, now I understand that, you know, there's many different reasons on transferring, and right. they're all not bad, but you got to make sure that you put yourself in position to be successful. And like you said, get to the next level. Exactly. If, like that's if, you, if, you, if you transfer because you messing up and doing that, and and not not taking coaching, not do, not in your studies, all that kind of stuff. Then that's mm-hmm. different. But if a dude working his tail off and can't crack the lineup, I ain't gonna tell you to sit if your dream is to play in the league because they they ain't gonna take nobody that's a good practice player. Right, that's so. true. And and a side note on that too, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a player, trust me, these coaches talk to each other. Exactly. So you're not doing what you're supposed to do. That coach is going to go back. Program either. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. That coach is going to go ask your former coach what type of player was he, and what is and 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 that right there is going to determine whether or not you're going to get that that next uh, opportunity uh, school. Look. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, so you got to make sure you're doing your part as well. All right. Let's go back to to the process of Jordan McRae. All right, so how was the process for you being in the arena ball and then going to the uh, XFL, you know, to these different leagues outside of the NFL? Like, how was was that process? What was that like for you? I ain't gonna lie, because I I love playing ball. It, It was fun for me. And I wasn't getting like uh, the practice squad is a lot is a place where younger players who may not be ready can develop and be under be under the eyes of NFL coaches and get NFL coaching and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I looked at it as um, I'm not getting the opportunity to be on a practice squad, but I can still develop my skills. So when I do get get a chance in the NFL, I'll be ready. So that's mm-hmm. how I always looked at it. It was a uh, good player still. A lot of guys for whatever reason are at that level good enough, mm-hmm. got in trouble, or just something maybe too small, maybe not maybe not fast enough, something like that, but still good mm-hmm. players. So it was good competition. And I just looked at it as I still get to do what I love for a living um, and with the hopes of getting the opportunity to play back in the NFL one day. So, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. Like, every year I played arena, playing in the AAF, playing in the XFL, around a whole bunch of guys who really be in the same exact position you are for whatever reason, haven't made it yet, but love ball and want to get a chance to showcase their talent. So it was, it was good to me. It was like it was that was pretty much like my practice squad is playing okay. in those those other leagues. Oh, that's what's up. Because that was mm-hmm. to be to be honest, that's what I was going to kind of piggyback off of to to kind of get the mindset of uh, most of the players that was in those leagues. Mm-hmm. Because you know, like you said, those are former NFL guys. Right, might have been too small, might have not had the right opportunity, or whatever the case may be. 
And um, so I was trying to figure out whether or not those guys were they satisfied being in that in in in, the, in that league, or were they the type of players? Majority, not all of them, but majority, yeah. um, are saying, "Man, you know, taking the same approach as you, as far as you know, I'm I'm using this as a pedestal to take me to where I want to get to." It was I ain't gonna lie. It was probably about half and half. It was it was about half a group of guys that wanted to use that as a pedestal to get back to the NFL, but then it was. The other half that either been there or older guys that just love playing ball, so they didn't want to give it up yet. So it was just guys who wanted to be out there, maybe late 20s, early 30s. I just had an opportunity to still play in that league. It wasn't the NFL, but it, football is football. It's still going to be fun. You're still going to have a good time. You're going to love the camaraderie with your teammates. So it was probably about half of guys tr trying to use it as a pedestal and half of guys that – just love playing ball and wanting another chance to keep playing it. Because once it's gone, it's gone. You know what I mean? So It's gone. It's gone forever. You right. Know? You, can, you can't get it back. Yep. In the field. Not for long. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, my next question. Um, how important, how important is it to make sure that you find your identity outside of football? Because we just said football is, football is not for long. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're not – because you, you think about it. You're, you're going to live, you know, God willing, an extra 50 years, let's say, right. 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. You only plan the, – the average career is what, a year – one and a half maybe? One and a half, one and a half to three years, so. Yeah, so you have, you have all these years that you have to live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know for me, given my perspective – you know, football, football was everything. You know, I didn't have mm -hmm. a backup plan when I was in college. You know, it was mm -hmm. football or nothing. Like, I didn't want to do anything else. And, you know, having these conversations that we have right now, no mm -hmm. one had these conversations with me. I didn't have, right. you know, somebody that played in the NFL close to me. So, I didn't know the ins and outs of it. So, mm -hmm. for me... So for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to play in the league. I'm going to play this amount of years. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then you get to the league, then reality sets in. Exactly. You know, you know? Mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, uh, uh, okay, I made, I made it, made the practice squad. Okay, got cut, got picked up again on the practice squad, got hurt. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh -huh. it's like, okay, so. Like what? What else do I like? What is my purpose? What do I have to? What am I trying to do? I know for me, just being real, and this is a show of just being real. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you you're lost sometimes. You know, yeah. you you trying to figure out what do you want to do with your life mm -hmm. after football, and when you spend 15, 16 years only In focusing football. on football, right? It's like okay, what is my purpose now? And so it took me a while to figure out my purpose, but my purpose was still football. Mm, so that's why – Exactly. So that's why now it's so easy for me to to help the, the younger generation, even the rookies, guys that's in the NFL right now, you know, mm -hmm. giving them my perspective on things, you right. know. So, you know, so that's my purpose now, man, just helping guys. So – for you, just like how important for you is it to to really find your purpose and your identity outside of football? Nah, you you really got to because with with how unstable of a game football is, like you can't make that your purpose. Because yeah. if if I made that my purpose, like I'm not on the team now, I'm not a football player now. If that was my purpose, I would be lost. I'd right. be depressed. And, you know, you be you 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 still go through that sometimes because when you're young, that's all you're thinking about is being a ball player, mm -hmm. making it, making millions, making your family family proud and stuff like that. And when they don't go exactly how you want it to, it's it's, it's extremely discouraging because that's all you've been working for. Mm -hmm. So you gotta have like I wouldn't tell nobody to like if football is your dream, make it your dream, go as hard for it as well. But always have in the back of your mind of what you're gonna do afterwards because no matter how good you are. It, yeah. it, it's gonna go away at some point, so you got to figure out what you're gonna be outside of that. So yeah, that's that's essential, bro. You got you gotta have that. You gotta have that backup plan because everybody gonna need it. Oh yeah, definitely, a hundred percent. So what you just said, 
Well, you hit it. You hit it kind of on the head. And um, I was I was talking with I was talking with a, a former athlete. Um, actually, he was an All Pro guy too. So mm -hmm. I was talking with him, and we were just getting each other's perspective on the financial part of things. Right. Right. So we was talking about once you once you your family feel that you made it, you know, it's like all hell breaks loose then. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, once your family understands or, or think that you made it, right, mm -hmm. whether you're a free agent or not, you know, they think, okay, NFL, he made it on the team. He's about to he get all this money. Right. Right. So my question to you was, you know, because like I said, a lot of these guys need to hear this, especially these younger guys, especially mm -hmm. these top high school players that's four or five stars that they parents right. right now already feel like they made it. Already feel like already feel like they're gonna make it. Already feel like they already made it. Treat them like they already mm -hmm. made it. So, for you, how was that process of just like man, knowing that your family is like family is gonna come after you or ask mm -hmm. you for something? You are gonna have a cousin that come out of nowhere, you right. know, that you haven't talked to or even heard of in like forever since you was a baby. So. Mm -hmm. Like what? What advice would you give to that? Because I know, I know for me, man, you had to. I know at the beginning of things, I felt that I had to to help everyone. Right. And you can't, you can't help you can't. everyone. You, you can't help everyone. Help. So, what advice would you give, like that youngster that that feels that pressure of having to help everyone? Man, I, I I would tell a youngster, man, if 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 you feel like you can't say no, find somebody who can't say no for you. Mm. like how I used to do it somebody because it'll be sometimes there'll be people that I don't even know that be like oh I'm I'm related to your mama by this so so and so mm -hmm. and I'll be like my mama handle all my money ask her my mama gonna tell you no and right, without, right without saying nothing about it yep. but you gotta be okay with with uh you gotta be okay with saying no to some people because even if they family or not if they f feel an opening that they can use to, to use you and better themselves yeah people gonna do that so exactly. it, it's, that's just how, that's that's just human nature. So you just got to figure out, like, put your put yourself first in mostly every situation. Like, of course, if if it's somebody that really really looked out for you, like, helped raise you, mama, daddy, grandmama, whatever it may be, like you can look out, but not mm -hmm. to the extent where you're gonna be struggling. If you feel like you're gonna yeah. miss this money somewhere down the road, then you probably shouldn't be giving it up. Right, and it's okay. It's okay to take them out to dinner, but I don't have yeah. to give you. I don't have to give you two, three thousand dollars now just because right. just because you helped me out. I mean, yeah, of course I, I, I would love to repay for for everything that you did, but mm -hmm. think about it. Okay, I have to repay you, then I have to repay the next person, repay the next person, right. repay the next person. Now if you're if you're just completely, you know, just completely out of it and just really struggling, then okay, I can I can I can definitely uh do my best to help you out. But right. other than that, you know, you don't, you don't have to feel obligated to help every single person out, you know, that comes right. around you. And uh, whatever they, and I'll say too, whatever they ask for don't mean that you're obligated to give. You right. got to give whatever you feel comfortable. Somebody asks you for $2,000, you ain't comfortable giving that. If you're comfortable, if somebody you really know and you really mess with helped you, helped you develop, if you're comfortable giving 400 that 400 is still going to help. Right. Exactly. So it's still a plus. Give, give, give what you're comfortable giving. Exactly. Not, what they, not necessarily what they ask for. Exactly, it's a plus. Mm -hmm. And and um, so with so with because because I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go back a little bit on um talking about the NFL and things like that. But I, I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of get this out because I know um a lot of the kids that I that I follow right now they're going through this also. So with social media, right? So right now, man, social media is like making kids feel so superior right now. Right. So as far as like how, how do you feel as far as social media? Like me, to be honest, I have I have split split feelings on it. You know, yeah. social media could definitely be a good thing if you use it the right way. If you use it the right way. That's right. What, that's all it is. Yeah. And then cause cause most of these kids, man, like especially these four or five star guys, man, they have like fifty follow fifty thousand followers. Mm -hmm. You know, already feeling like they're a celebrity. So, in my opinion, and this might be my old school way of thinking, is that a lot of times when you have that, 
I feel like a kid can get real complacent and it could kind of it, make, it, them feel, make them feel like they already made it when they ain't exactly. really ain't done nothing yet. Yeah. Exactly. And then also it it can it can hurt their game because mm-hmm. if I'm a coach and I'm telling you this don't look good, you need to do better, you didn't have a good game, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that, you know, critiquing them. Mm-hmm. But he gets on social media and everything is saying how great he is. As a 15, 16, 17 year old, who do I listen to now? You probably gonna listen to the positive reinforcement instead of the actual coaching. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my thing with, with social media right now, man. Cause it's like you have these these kids that's some of them really don't want to take coaching because you have fifty thousand people telling you how great you are. Right. So man, that's I mean, right now that's that's tough. You know, something that I'm dealing with. Um, but for the most part, I feel like the kids that I that I work with um, trust my my judgment and understand mm-hmm. that everything I say is out of love. Uh, right. And they know I'm gonna critique them hard though. All right. So moving moving back a little bit. So I was a free agent, you was a free agent, right? Mm-hmm. We know a lot of free agents out there. So in your opinion, how crucial was it to have a successful practice as a free agent? So like like how important was it? Because people don't understand like how like yeah. how crucial it is as a free agent. No, I, I ain't gonna lie. That that to me, the practices to me were like game day. Not like how 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 I walked into it. Because first of all, if undrafted free agent, like regardless of what they tell you, you you're not brought in to make the team. You mm-hmm. probably you brought in to showcase what you can do and and maybe catch somebody's eye. If you don't. If you don't have no good practices, they're not going to put you in the game. Nobody else going to mm-hmm. see you. And the only team that's going to see you is a team that don't think you're good. So right. so I feel like that's for an undrafted free agent or, or even a, a low draft pick guy, that's that's the most yeah. important thing. Show, showcasing cause, showcasing your abilities because the guys that were drafted early, they have money in their pocket and a reason to believe that they're going to be there. You got to prove that you're supposed to be there. Mm. So if you ain't doing that, you're just not going to be there alone. Right. And I'm glad you said that too. A seventh round draft pick, you're pretty much a free agent. You're, you're, you're free. You're, yeah, you're free. You're free. You're, you're, yeah, free you're, with a you're free. Money. Right. Yeah. You just have a little, a, a couple more dollars than me. Yeah. But you're pretty much a free agent. You're on the same thin ice as me. Um. Mm-hmm. You just, just so happen to get picked one round before me, pretty much. Right. That's so. It. Yeah. Exactly. So. So, uh, so for guys that's out there, man, that that seven round guy, uh, some of you six round guys, you know, mm-hmm. you still you have to prove yourself just as much as that free agent. And, right. You know, like you said, you know, you have these guys that get. I, I like to say, if you get picked in the first three rounds, maybe fourth round, depending on who you are, yeah, you know, you have mm-hmm. a lot more leeway to to mess up. First round is definitely. Yeah. You have about they're gonna let you they're gonna let them give you every chance to develop. Man, a first rounder, second round, you have about four years to develop. You 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 if you if you get it right or get it wrong, don't worry about it next year. Okay, he'll get it next year. Okay, he'll get it next right. year. You have about four years right. to get it right. Free agent, you you're day by day with everything that uh that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, Pretty much how 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 I tell people is a first rounder and an undrafted guy can make the same mistake. The first rounder is he needs time to develop. The seventh, the undrafted guy, he's not good enough. That's just how they're gonna look at it. And this, and that's that's a that's a that's a, a wonderful perspective because it's mm-hmm. true. It, it's definitely true that perspective right there. That's a hundred percent true. Right. So my my so moving on a little bit now, right? I like to I like to move on to. A little fun part of the show. So the first one is mm-hmm. give uh, give a fun fact about yourself, something that somebody might not know. Um, and for the listeners, it might be it might be a lot. I don't know. Uh, fun fact: twenty eighteen in arena ball, they they have tight ends and guards, so the little mm-hmm. bit more athletic linemen they play uh, tight end. I'm a little mm-hmm. bit more athletic, so I was a 
First team all arena tight end, 12 catches, 156 yards, four touchdowns. Ain't nobody counting but me, but <laughs> so, uh, got a little jiggy with the rock, but that's that's about it. That's about it. Man, I didn't know that. I didn't know you, you caught 12 balls. Mm hmm. Should have been more. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know. I know you scored. I, saw, I know I yeah. saw some clips of you scoring, but yeah. I didn't know you had 12 catches, man. Look mm -hmm. at you. Check you out, man. We, we should have. Um, I remember back in 2014. Uh, I think it was the Fiesta Bowl. Mm -hmm. I remember a coach coach put in that play where I move out to wide receiver. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we end Everybody up. Everybody was hot. I got the motion. <laughs> but we end up cutting it because uh, Tooks dropped the ball in practice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the day before, <laughs> the day before, man, the day before, uh -huh. you know, I was supposed to be, you know, move out to wide receiver, and then uh, our tight end at the time cut it. I mean, drop the ball in practice. The day before the game, he dropped the ball before practice. And if anyone know uh, Coach George O'Leary, he is he is very superstitious. All right. If it so, don't work in practice, he ain't going to call it in the game. Exactly. If it doesn't work in practice, he is not calling it. So when that play didn't work because our tight end dropped the ball, he cut the play mm -hmm. and uh, ruined my chances of being a skill player, man. <laughs> man, so, so my next question. All right, mm -hmm. my last question of the night. I've done this with every every person that that I brought on here. So you have you are a head coach, right? You're a head coach. Mm -hmm. You have to put it put together an offensive line, an uh, offensive okay. line. Okay. NFL offensive line. Give me your five guys. Five guys like right now or like yeah. all time. It is on you. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do right now because all time all time gonna be a little bit. A little bit difficult right now. I would say I'm gonna say one A and one B because Tyrone Smith not playing right now. He hurt. I'll say a left tackle is be Dave Bakhtiari mm. or Trent Williams. Mm -hmm. Um, left guard. I think. Hmm. What else? Say a left guard. I'll, I'll just say guard. David DeCastro from the Steelers. I really like his okay. name. David DeCastro okay. from the Steelers. Center. Um, I really like uh, Corey Lindsley from, mm. from Green Bay. Mm -hmm. real, real strong player. Right guard, I'll still say Zach Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though he hadn't played in a couple of weeks, right tackle, I'll say uh, it's, it's still be Trent Brown. Mm. Or Trent like Brown that. or Lane Johnson. Trent Brown, Lane Johnson. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Trent Brown, yeah. And I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I was a little iffy for a while with Trent Brown. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he he just really he really didn't show me. You know, he he just really you know I wasn't really impressed with him for yeah, a while. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. You know, and then uh, now now I'm starting to kind of look back and go back to his games and watching his games and now. Now I'm like, okay, I understand. For a guy that's 360, that 380, yeah, right. that big move, move to like move that. like that is is different. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, no, that, that's a good lineup. That's definitely a good right. lineup. I know, I know at left tackle, and then from week to week, I've changed. But I know at left tackle, you know, similar to what you said, um, I definitely will have Trent Trent Williams mm -hmm. or uh, Tyrone Smith. Yeah, I know right. he's been hurt. He's been right. hurt a lot. Um, I definitely have to put at guard. I have to put uh, my guy Quentin Nelson in there. Ah, uh, yes, um, yeah, I forgot all about Quentin Nelson. Yep. Yeah, Quentin Nelson I definitely, definitely up there. Right, I definitely have to put Quentin Nelson up there, mm -hmm. and then at center, um, it, it'll probably have to be. It's a man. It's a couple guys, man. I like yeah. Alex Mack. Alex Mack. I like um, Travis Frederick, and uh, I like Jason Kelsey, man. I like him. And even though he's a smaller guy, I yeah, just like they, his athleticism. You're right. He played with a lot of pop too, even he though he's smaller. Yeah, he does. Hey, and uh, what's my guy? Um, I want to say he plays a uh, red man with the red hair. Are uh, you talking about for the for the Bucks? Jensen. For the Bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jensen. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ryan Jensen. Ryan Jensen, scrappy dog. I, I man, like Ryan too, yeah. man, I love the way he play. I love mm -hmm. the way he play. And then my other guard, I, I like that move. I like Zach Martin. Mm -hmm. And then for my for my tackle, um, 
I like uh, what's my guy name Schwartz from uh, Kansas City. Oh, oh yeah, he a dog too. Yeah, yeah. Schwartz, yeah. Schwartz don't get a lot of credit, but he's been an All Pro the last couple of years, and nobody don't really be talking about it. Nobody, nobody. Yeah, Schwartz, Schwartz is good too. Exactly, man. He, he's a great, uh, he a great player. I think all, all, I think all those guys are all top players, and I think mm -hmm. we'll, you'll go to the Super Bowl if you ever put that line together, man. Oh yeah, because it go through the line. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. for for uh for the absolute last question, man, what's what's um in the future for Jordan McRae? What what what's what's the plan for Jordan McRae? Is uh, it coaching? Is it training? What's the plan? I'll, pro I'll probably say uh it got to be something like I know you can't play ball forever, but it got to be something dealing with dealing with football still. So, I mean, I'm coaching at a high school now. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, still, obviously, still want to play still. So whenever that opportunity comes, I'll be ready, working out every day for it. But in in the in the far future, I'll definitely say either training, most likely training, because I feel like that's a, a a better way to reach out to kids and 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 open it up to helping out more more people than just actually coaching. Because I can only help the people out of school if I'm coaching. But if I'm training, just um, helping people how to play offensive line or just be a healthier person in general. And um, still be around athletics, so I feel like definitely training kids or something like that will be in the future. There we go, there we mm -hmm. go, man. And I know, uh, I know you're gonna get that shot again. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely gonna get that shot again, man. I appreciate you coming on, mm -hmm. man. This was a great conversation. Gave a a, a a bunch of insight on just what it's like just being in that NFL, giving a different perspective, not only. You know, not just what guys see from first, second round, but seeing, you know, you have to work hard when you're a free agent. You have to work twice as hard when you're a free agent. Right. So I appreciate right. you coming on, man. Appreciate you having me, Buck. Nah, definitely. Once again, guys, I appreciate everyone that's listening. Uh, this is Torian Wilson with the Craft and Lyman Show. Make sure you tune in next week again, uh, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Appreciate you guys, man.